Welcome to the importance of flexible technology in an evolving healthcare landscape, presented by Robin Wiener and Jennifer Bowers. Today we're talking about the importance of using flexible technology in the new healthcare landscape. We're gonna have a quick agenda, you can take a look at that. We're gonna talk a little about who we are, what we do, how we pivoted, and we're actually gonna show you a product today. So let's talk about where we got started. Let's time travel back to 2001. Can you believe the iPod was released 19 years ago and the top three movies were Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter and um, Shrek. And can you believe that den denim was the look? So that was a long time ago. So we were founded in Rockville, Maryland in 2001. So we are a Maryland company. We've been here from the beginning. We started in the incubator up in, um, right at the top of Rockville. And about nine years later, we were named the Maryland Tech Incubator Company of the Year, um, which was a great honor. I was really very excited about it. It's been great to be able to grow in the state of Maryland. We received a lot of support and um, through the small business resources, not only in Rockville, the county, but also the state economic agency. We've actually been able to travel a few times to Meditech in Germany with the state of Maryland and to Arab Health this past um, January. I hate to say that was my last trip. So let me tell you a little bit about Get Real Health. What we're all about is really building a long, a lifelong health record, bringing information from everywhere. So what's great about connecting with um, the HIE here in Maryland is we're pulling in all that data from all those different hospitals and different um, labs <clears throat> and different clinics all to one. And then we bring in the other side of it, which is bringing in all the home care information. And when you have it coming off devices, coming self-entered information, um, coming off different apps, you bring all that information in and really you're getting a clear picture of what your patient looks like. So one of my favorite taglines is see your patient like you've never seen it before, the whole person. So we're able to do that around the world. Um, we are of course here in the United States. We are here on um, of course in Maryland, but all the way over to California with multiple different hospital systems that we're working with and different nonprofits. We're also up in North, um, up in Canada. And I'm excited to say we just hit over half a million people using the platform in Canada between the, the province of Alberta, Canada and Saskatchewan, Canada. And there we are actually in Alberta is the place that you get your COVID results, very similar to what we're gonna be doing with CRISP here in Maryland. So it's just expanding like crazy. We're also over in Europe with the National, um, National Health um, NHS and uh, with our partner Southampton, we've got 19 different hospital systems there and we are just starting to expand in the Netherlands. We're also down in Asia Pacific in post Australia and expanding in New Zealand and soon to be hitting the Middle East, hopefully within the next week or two. Just a quick view of all our different clients we have around the world. Um, so it's, it's very exciting. We're looking forward to having Chris as part of our United States platform. So let me tell you a little bit about our products and, and Jen's gonna show you, you're gonna see some, some uh, PowerPoint, but Jen's actually gonna show you what we are doing. So we've got a platform play. It's not an application, it's an actual platform. We've got two pieces of it. We have our bottom piece, which is the database. That's APIs that connect into all different systems like EMRs, like CRISP HIE, um, outpatient EMRs, all the clinical systems, and um, be able to pull all that information together and be able to do deep learning. And above that, we have what we call our product Instant PHR, which is made of 200 different web parts that you can build any kind of health application. And Jen's gonna show you how that little magic works just a few slides below. Of course, we have all, all the different standards in the US and internationally. Um, we are always looking at times for us to upgrade this and making sure that we are on top of the game here in the US and also internationally. And we meet all security and privacy standards. This is a must. Um, it's tough here in the US, but it's even tougher sometimes than internationally. So we are always on top of that. We've got a team that's just absolutely looking for that to make sure that information is secure. 
It's very important to have that secure and private for our patients and our citizens. So in some PHR, which we're gonna kind of show you the magic today. Again, um, it empowers the patients and providers to have one look. So it's not tethered to just one EMR or one area. It brings all the information together. And we're gonna be able to show you, um, today we're gonna show you on the desktop, but of course we have a native app with that. And you can see it on your tablets. It moves with whatever it's responsive to um, whatever uh, device they're working. But you can kind of see all the different pieces. One of the most important pieces that we do have is to be able to do it in multiple languages, both Western languages and Eastern languages. And we're able to go left to right and right to left. And that's really what's helped us expand around the world. The other piece of our platform is called CHBase. Again, we talked a little bit about that above, but just think of it as CHBase being the middle of the ecosystem and being able to bring all the information from the hospitals, the health devices, the HIEs, labs, health registry, pharmacy, and all the things that are happening at home. So health applications like RunKeeper, Fitbit, um, uh, any other application you could possibly think of, we connect into that, or, or Apple Health actually, and bring all that information together. So we're combining all that data and that's why the partnership with CRISP is so important for us. We're also are able to do, again, analytics with that, and we even have APIs for the third, a third party developer to build on top of that. Cause you know what, sometimes we don't want, know what the best coolest thing is gonna happen out in the community. And somebody's building something that we wanna be part of that. So they're welcome to build on top of CHBase. So now I'm gonna throw it over to Jennifer and she's gonna actually take you through the rest of the um, presentation and then dive into a demo. Jen, take it. Thanks so much, Robin. Um, again, my name is Jen Bowers. I'm the uh, Director of Clinical Solutions here at Get Real Health. Um, I'm going to walk you through a little bit more about the magic of Instant PHR and the fact that it is such a flexible platform and why that can really help um, you know, any, um, any institution or organization as they are trying to share uh, information with a patient and work with patients um, and grow um, as, they, um, as they have the tools uh, to do so. So we're gonna just talk a little bit about COVID first and how we pivoted um, during that. Um, so, you know, pre-COVID, there weren't a lot of video visits. Um, people would go into the doctor's office and do everything live and in person. Um, only 25% of consumers um, had used telehealth prior to the COVID pandemic. Then what we started seeing is, um, as we started to get into COVID, 59% uh, reported that they're more likely to use telehealth services now than they previously were. It started to become more of the norm. And as we've gotten further and further into the pandemic, we're actually seeing that 33% would actually leave their current provider um, to go to a different provider that did provide telehealth services. So the whole institution um, of medicine has changed in how we provide it to the consumer. And without having a flexible technology, um, people won't be able to grow with those changing needs. And, and COVID's just one example, um, but you know we don't know what the next thing is gonna be that comes next. So I'm gonna kind of walk through um, the time period of what we did. Um, on uh, day one, um, when COVID was declared a pandemic, we got together and we sat down and we said, what can we do to use our tools to help people? So we dove into our um, arsenal of already developed tools. And that's one of the great things about the platform that we have is that it already has all of these tools. And in a couple of minutes, you're gonna hear me talk about them like Legos, um, but we have all of these tools that we can just add to um, that CH base level um, to provide any sort of tool for our clients. But in this case, COVID. So in the, over the next few days, we brought those tools together to create a new solution that we called Talk With Your Doc, and that was to bring video conferencing forward uh, for our clients. We brought it to them, and what we heard from them is that, yes, they definitely wanted a tool to help screen COVID patients and keep them from coming to the hospital, but the bigger need they actually found 
was the need to have their chronic disease management patients, their immunocompromised patients, to give them the ability to be treated outside of the facility. So that's really, we, we took that back to the drawing board and added some more care management tools. And in 16 days total, from start to finish, we stood up the final talk with your doc. So very quickly using our already um, built out tools, we just took them and put them together and created a new application very quickly when the pandemic hit. So now is when we're gonna talk about the Legos. So what we wanna do is like every client we consider to be part of the Legos, CH base being that bottom layer Lego that brings all of the data together, just like Robin was talking about from wherever it's coming from um, and brings it all together. And then we can build different instances of instant PHR on top of that by bringing different tools or widgets or Legos together to potentially make a patient portal, a uh, care management application, or something even more specific like a baby health app. So what are we doing for CRISP? Um, the goal here was just to be able to get patients their COVID laboratory results and some education about it. So very simple, very few Legos. But the great thing is that there's always that ability with all of our Legos that we already have built that we can add them on to the current CH base um, level here and just build out something bigger if needed in the future. So again, just speaking to that flexible tool, starting with something very small with fewer tools and adding on already built tools to make it um, a, a more robust use case. All right, so the next thing is the demonstration. I apologize, I have to stop sharing this screen to bring up the live screen. Um, so this will just take a moment. But what I do want to say during that time is just a little um, overview of some of the things that are important to know about instant PHR and flexible um, technology. Um, and I apologize because of the security that Robin talked about, I have been timed out. So I'm just gonna log back in really quickly and share my screen. All right. Here we go. So what you're seeing today is actually just a demo site that we have, and it really has um, a lot of our bells and whistles. Um, but I just kind of wanted to walk through parts of it to show you the technology um, in the specific layout that we've done. We've talked a little bit about the flexibility and what we have in our, um, in our tool bin or our toolbox is what we call our content management system. And that's the system that works behind our tools and helps us configure the applications that we do for each individual client and also what allows us to be able to add things very quickly. The content management system is a homegrown content management system. It was made for um, users that are not programmers. Um, I'm a nurse, I am, does, do not come from a tech background, but I'm able to use it. And we can not only add and change the coloring, the layout, the different pages, but we can also add very robust content, whether it's little blocks of education that we have here or very targeted education, or whether it's building a questionnaire or a survey to be used in the tool or a health journal to gather soft data from a patient or to put together plans of care. We give that ability to our clients to be able to use their own information and their own uh, prescriptive authority to give the information that they want to give to, to, their, um, to their patients. Now, what we're looking at here is a general use case uh, demonstration site. You'll see on the left-hand side, there is pretty deep navigation and we'll go through that a little bit. But what we wanted to do was to put the things that made the most sense to patients up front. So you'll see here are these tiles that allow patients to get to where they need to be. So they're, think of them as quick links to get to the tasks that they need to do on their care plan for today. Looking at some biometric data, um, whether it's their blood glucose, their blood pressure or their weight. And we'll walk through those in a little bit. And then over on the right-hand side, we have an example of the biometric data being seen in a graphical format. What we did here, instead of 
um, building out different graphs for every piece of biometrics and taking up a lot of um, space is that we what we call them are stacked graphs. We put them all together in one, but patients are able to just simply click on the aspects that they don't want to see or click those back on. And the great thing about this is that not only do patients see their biometric data in trends, but they can track each piece of biometric data against other pieces. So if they're a diabetic, they might want to see what their blood sugar is doing when their weight goes up and down. Um, or um, if they're a congestive heart failure patient, the sodium that they're eating um, and watching their weight go up. So it gives patients some insight um, to understand the, la the, the biometric information and to understand their data. We've always, um, as, as a health industry, just kind of presented data to patients, um, but patients have never really had a lot of understanding around that. So one of the things we really think is important in any technology is to be able to give patients context, whether that's on easily seen graphs or whether that's on the health content that we present or whether that's using something called um, info button technology. And I'm gonna walk through that when I talk about the labs here. We have the patient's lab results here, and you can see that there's two different dates of laboratory results, and they're just speaking to the individual results and using very simple iconography or just coloring here. It's letting you know if things are in or out of range. But if I go ahead and click on one of them, and in this case, it's the AST, which is a function of the liver. Um, and what you'll see here is when you click on it, what pops up is all of your previous results. So again, you can see the trend in your particular um, results. And then you can look at them each individually and where they fall on these linear graphs. But then with the info button, what we're able to do is present some very contextual information about what the specific lab test is, keeping them in the site, keeping them loyal to our customers so patients don't need to go out and search the internet for that information. And this info button is uh, presented with our labs, medications, conditions, and immunizations so that patients can get, again, very targeted health content um, around their specific needs. Of course, we have secure messaging. Um, patients are able to message back and forth either a specific provider or if on the provider side they have care teams, a patient can um, send a secure message to a whole care team, depending on the structure of our client. So if we go up here and look a little bit um, at these tiles, um, I'm going to bring us to uh, one of the biometric pages or the blood pressure page. This is going to show all of the patient's vital signs. So what you'll see here on top is another graph, another stacked graph, so they can toggle on and toggle off that information. But this is just the systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Um, hovering over each reading will let them know what that specific reading is. And then what you'll see here down on a, in a tabular form again is those readings by date using that color again to let you know if it's in or out of range. But then when we get down here, this is one of the key pieces of instant PHR. As Robin was showing you CH base and its functionality and talking about the fact that our goal is to bring in data from multiple sources so that patients can see all of their data in one place, it's key that we source all of that data so that everybody can see where each piece of data comes from. So that way, in this specific case, uh, this patient is using a blood pressure cuff they have at home to enter their um, blood pressure readings, except for this one, which they self-entered. And this is key for um, um, their clinical team because they're gonna decide what they consider trusted data. Um, they might find that every reading they get from the blood pressure cuff is elevated, but anytime the patient self-enters, it's normal. Um, and that might let them know that maybe the patient isn't entering some of the information correctly, and they're much more likely to diagnose and treat over much uh, over more trusted data. So it's really important that every piece of data is sourced. The next piece that I want to bring you to is what we call our, our patient dashboard. And we've, we've both talked about the flexibility um, for our clients to be able to build an application that makes sense with just the tools that they're gonna need. But we really think that's really important for the patients too. So what we created was what we call our patient dashboard. And many of our clients actually use this as um, their homepage um, so that 
patients can put the things that make the most sense to them up front and they won't have to click through as much and it'll be right there for them when they need it. And how that works is if I click edit display, you'll see all the tools and widgets that are available in this particular instance that a patient can use. And all a patient has to do is click on the ones they want to display, maybe the ones that they use, you know, I'm checking my blood pressure, I'm checking my blood glucose, really want my upcoming appointments here, maybe not so much my sleep, but my upcoming appointments are probably the most important thing. So I'm gonna drag and drop that right over to the top and then I'm gonna save that. So then they've had the ability to create their own experience and what makes the most sense for them. So that was really important to us um, when we were building uh, this tool. One of the other things um, that's truly important to us is the patient's ability to share their record. We really wanted to make sure that patients in need could share their record uh, with whom they wanted, when they wanted, and when they wanted. So I'm gonna bring you into this share section. What you'll see here is any of the more account information um, is under the patient's image. And you'll also see that this patient has already um, linked her account to her husband and her daughter's account um, by using this sharing tool. So if we go ahead and uh, come into the sharing uh, capabilities, what you'll see is a patient simply has to send an email invitation. Um, you'd enter the email address, you would send the, set up a passcode and send them that separately. And then you can actually decide what level of sharing you wanna give that person. So maybe you only wanna use read, give somebody read-only access. Maybe it's someone that you don't want to have being able to edit your, um, uh, your medical information. Um, or you can give them read and modify. Maybe it's somebody in your family that you want um, their help from to fill out questionnaires or surveys. So you wanna give them the ability to interact a little bit more. Or you can give full custodial access. And this would be if you are unable um, to be able to maintain your record. In addition to this, the patient also has the ability to share either their whole record or individual pieces of their record. So maybe your daughter drives you to your doctor's appointments, but you don't want her to know all the inf other information in your record. You could give her read-only access and only share your appointments with her. Um, so again, putting that control and that power in the patient's hand is very important, giving them the capabilities of sharing their data um, and what pieces they wanna share when and with whom. And of course, at any time, they can come back and revoke that date, that sharing capability if they so choose. I wanna go back now and talk a little bit about what we've done for um, care management. So now that we've had to pivot um, to much more care being done outside of the doctor's offices, there's really much more of a need to be able to see um, patient data from home. Um, and be able to give them plans of care to, to do for themselves at home. So these are tools that we have had, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and bring us into um, an example of a, a task manager or an action plan. Um, and this is the patient's tasks for the day. This particular patient, um, they're supposed to walk 30 minutes, um, which is good for our physical and our mental health these days. Uh, they need to track their blood sugar, their weight, and their blood pressure. Now, there's a couple ways this can be done. So a patient can simply come in and enter um, the information. Um, if they've checked their blood glucose and maybe it's 100, they can, they can simply add that in and hit save. While they're in here, they can also send a message to their provider um, if they have a question or a concern about that specific task, or they can set a reminder. So the reminders can be set around anything that they feel they need to, whether it's about an appointment or that they have to remember to get on the scale every morning, um, again, just to keep them on task. But if a patient has a connected device, and when we were talking about the blood pressures, uh, we talked about readings coming in from an Omron cuff that we had connected. Um, but if a patient has a task that tells them to, in this case, check their blood sugar every morning, and they're using a connected device, all they have to do is check their blood sugar. So they check the blood sugar, um, that data automatically 
flows into the record. It populates the blood glucose graph and table. The other thing is we also have an alerting system. So a provider can set up alerts around such biometric information. So maybe your provider isn't so worried and doesn't necessarily need to know if your blood glucose is elevated once, um, but they might wanna know if it's the average reading over two weeks is over 300. That would be very valuable information. So there's a lot of flexibility again in the alerting system. They can set it up around one reading, averages of readings, uh, readings within a certain range um, over a certain time period. Um, but in this case, um, back to this blood sugar coming in, if this blood sugar is outside of the threshold of, of that alert, it would then trigger that alert. So the provider would get the alert. But in addition to that, when the patient simply checks their blood sugar, it checks off their task for them. So they don't even need to interact with the application um, to complete their task. They get a reminder, check your blood sugar, they check their blood sugar. And unless they wanted to go in and look at it in relation to other things or look at it over time, they wouldn't even need to go into the application. So we've tried to make it as simple as possible um, for patients to be able to manage their records. One of the other things that I think is a great tool is our journaling capabilities. So this is about capturing the soft data um, around a patient. And this allows us to be able to have patients track um, more of their symptom um, information. In this case, what we have here um, on this demo site is a mood journal. So this allows a patient to rate their level of depression, uh, their level of anxiety, how many hours of sleep they had, um, and then how they felt when they woke up. So the great thing about this is they then can track this over time um, and see how they're doing. Maybe what they'll see is every time they, um, they don't get as much sleep, their depression and anxiety increases. And the other key is this is another tool that can also be used with the alerts. So if a patient all of a sudden is saying that they have 10 out of 10 depression, they may want to share that with a family member to alert them that something's going on. So a patient can certainly set up an alert that goes to a friend or a family member, but a provider has the capability um, to set up those, um, um, those alerts to themselves. So the next thing I wanna talk about is our surveys. So this is another great tool to be able to use for any form questionnaire that you, know, you normally pass out in your normal practices um, and hospital systems, whether it's um, a pre-admission survey, uh, a PHQ-9 um, to rate levels of depression, um, whether it's uh, a symptom questionnaire, uh, like the one we have in here as a chemotherapy survey, they can all be stored in here. In addition to that, they can be sent as tasks within those plans of care. So if you wanna send a patient um, a form or a questionnaire before they come in for an appointment, you're able to send them a task to do so. One of the other tools that, um, before I show you inside one of the surveys, one of the other things that we can do is based on answers to the survey questions, we can follow up and send them that survey again. So imagine we're doing a COVID screening and a patient is complaining of symptoms. We're able to uh, score those particular questions. And based on that score, the patient would then get the survey sent to them the following day. And until that score went down to a certain level, they would continually get that um, they would continually get that survey sent to them once a day. So as I kind of indicated there, we're able to score the questions. Um, we have branch logic within our, our, our form builder, and uh, we can send recommendations based on um, answers and based on scores. So if we say here, uh, again, this is a symptom journal, do you have nausea? The answer is no. Um, you'll see the next question stays the same. But if I change that to a yes, you'll notice that the questions change below. And as I go down the line, do you take any medication? Yes. It asks me what I'm taking. Um, does it give you relief? No. So as you go through this um, survey, at the end, because of these answers, we could push a recommendation that says you really should reach out to your provider to talk to them about a better anti-nausea um, plan for you. 
So again, a lot of flexibility within that survey tool. One of the other things that I think is really important um, now that, you know, we need to be able to get as much trusted information in our patients' hands, um, since we're not seeing them face-to-face -face as much, um, is the use of a recommendations tool. So what we've done in that content management system that I was telling you about, we've set up recommendation uh, recommendations engine. So you build these recommendations in the content management system. And the way I usually phrase it is you set them and forget them. So you build the rules and then as the patient comes in, if they fit certain criteria, they will get specific recommendations sent to them. And that could be something very general, like sending a recommendation once a year to your whole population to get flu vaccines, <clears throat> or it could be something based around um, their age, their gender, laboratory result, biometric reading, medications, conditions, or any combination of those things. So it could be something very specific. You may want a recommendation to go to any female over the age of 50 who happens to be on a medication. Um, we'll use Lasix as an example because it depletes your potassium. So you wanna send them a recommendation every three months to get their blood tested for their potassium level. Um, these recommendations can be videos, they can be articles, they can simply be um, just a line of education to tell them what you want them to do. We also, of course, um, you know, as Robin was saying, we don't know what the next neat thing that somebody's working on in their basement, and that's why we want applications to build onto CH Base. Um, in that vein, we know that there are so many applications out there that um, document um, people's exercise and sleep. And um, we know that that's their wheelhouse. So what we wanted to do instead of trying to build something is allow for patients to bring that information in from other places. So what we do is we allow for patients to connect maybe their Fitbit or their Garmin um, or their Apple Health Kit and bring the information in. And some people will say, well, why? You know, if they already have an app for that, why? And what we talk about is the fact that being able, again, to show patients the correlation in, um, in their metrics is so important because they may not realize um, what can affect certain things. So maybe they have diabetes and they know every night after dinner, their blood pressure, they don't feel good, their blood pressure, their blood sugar goes up. And one night they go out and take a walk and they just walk for 15 minutes and they realize, wow, I feel completely better. My blood, my blood sugar dropped hundred points. I'm back in a normal range. Well, then they've realized that just that walk is what's gonna help them with that blood sugar level. So then they can track that exercise against their blood sugar levels to see that trend and educate them and motivate them to continue to do it. So we wanted to make sure that we could bring that information in um, from, um, from other devices. Now, of course, patients can certainly hand enter that information too. And anywhere on the site where there's this little plus button, that's where a patient would hand enter any information. They get the form of, of in this case, for exercise, what exercise they're doing, the duration, the distance, number of steps, and, and all of that information to be saved. So I think that we've really tried to give you an idea of the needs of a flexible tool. One of the other things I think that you know is so important um, anywhere we go is the localization. And Robin talked about that a little bit. That's the last thing I'm going to show you um, is how we can change the languages um, and, um, and how we made that as easy as possible. Um, and I'll show it using Arabic because it is the most dramatic. Um, but you know, people say, well, this is great for when you're working in other countries, but it's great when we're working in the United States too. I mean, considering we are the melting pot, um, we have a hospital system in a large um, urban area that is looking to have up to 12 um, languages on one site. So a patient can choose which language they want to interact with their medical data. So in any of our installations, there's a drop down um, on this particular demo site. We have translated into um, Dutch for our um, clients in the Netherlands and into Arabic. Um, so in the demo site, um, there's just two little things that I need to click on to get us to change that language. And what you'll see here 
is in addition to the language changing from English to Arabic, the whole aspect of the page has changed. So now instead of reading from left to right, we read from right to left. And that's really a big piece of the flexibility that's, that's really helped um, bring that health information to people who may not be able to, to speak English or might not be in the United States, um, but it, it helps them um, in addition to the ease of use, it, it helps them understand their health information also. So kind of in conclusion, I, I hope I've been able to show you um, and speak to the fact um, that we have to all be flexible. None of us expected COVID to be what COVID has been at least not last year. Um, and we've had to see the whole healthcare industry change dramatically. Having a flexible tool already in our tool chest um, was a wonderful thing. Um, we didn't have to scramble as much. We simply pivoted as you saw in those slides decks to make talk with your doc in 16 days. To be able to do that is so important to our clients um, to be able to give them the ability to change and build upon um, what their original use case is because we don't know what our use cases are going to be six months from now. Um, and we all have to be flexible um, in every aspect of our lives, frankly, um, but we wanted to make sure that that we have a flexible technology to share with our patients. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. This recording will be available through the conference portal until Tuesday, November 17th, after which time all videos will be posted to the CRISP website. Because this presentation has been previously recorded, please send any questions you may have via email to annualconference at crisphealth.org.